So there's been this huge conversation of whether there is a difference between investment and savings. Some have said that if I'm setting aside money for uh, later use, it could be for tomorrow, for next year, for 10 years, it is some form of investment. Others have said, I've said, no, it is not an investment. My concern really is that if you have a difference between savings and investment, what fraction of my income should go into savings and what fraction should go into investment? And for those who are in the informal sector, those who have side businesses who want to contribute towards their pensions, what fraction of your income should go into you know, saving towards your pension? That is the conversation we are having at this moment. So if you have concerns, send them to us via our social media platform, CV3 Ghana, because we have been joined via Zoom by an investment analyst and advisor, Sofar Kafite. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Sofar. Right. So it really, is there a difference? Savings, investments? Yes, there's a, a huge difference between savings and investments. Mm. Savings is setting aside money for emergencies, future use, and all that. Mm -hmm. There are different ways you can save by putting money into your bank account. And you know that typically a normal bank account doesn't bear so much interest. Mm -hmm. Some even put it into a current account mm -hmm. or something. Those ones don't really come with interest. Those who even have it in the savings account will offer you interest that is lower than even treasury growth rate. But when it comes to, uh, to investment, investments, offer higher returns than savings. And the reason why uh, savings have, has what uh, interest rate is that mostly savings are short term. The difference okay. is that savings are short term mm -hmm. and then their risk is lower. Because if I go and put my um, 5,000, 2,000 into my normal savings account, because I can always walk to the bank and go and withdraw, mm -hmm. it doesn't have so much interest on it. Maybe sometimes even 5%, 2%, 3%, and all that, depending on the quantum mm -hmm. you have. So because you, you, I mean, the time you can walk in to take it there is, any time is more or less like a checking account. You can walk in and withdraw it at any time. So they'll offer you lower interest rates on it because mm -hmm. it's short term. Mm -hmm. But when you come to like investment, for investment, you defer consumption, put money into a financial asset. Okay. So the financial Financial assets like treasury bills, bonds, corporate bonds, um, fixed deposit with banks, and all that. Most of these ones, you can, with the treasury bill, Bank of Ghana comes out with the rate. So you have an idea of, if I do 91, day, how much, what's the uh, interest rate on it? Maybe around 14 point something percent. If you do 182 days, which is this month, maybe around 15 percent. And you do the 364 day, which is one year note in the old format, that would be around 16 point something percent. So with a typical investment, you have an idea of the duration by investing for this period of time. And this is the interest I'll be earning on investment. But so, 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 so far, what you're saying is that a key difference between savings and investment is that for investments, you, can, you, 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 you can't go and touch it because you're buying an instrument and there are restrictions on accessing the funds. But for savings, you can easily walk into the bank and withdraw. That's the difference, right? So, yeah. so, so now yeah, let's... That's, that's one of the, the differences. differences. Okay, so but let's, let's now talk about yeah. how much of my salary I should be, you know, putting into savings and what percentage should go into investments. So for instance, if I'm earning 1,000 Ghana City, at the end of the month, how much, what's the percentage uh, I should be put it into my savings accounts and that for investments as well. Okay. So typically, uh, in managing your personal finance, you should have a budget. Once you have a, your budget, it stays all your receipts, how much you are in, maybe your salary plus other income. And then you now list your expenditures in, in, in order of preference, the ones that are pressing and the ones that are not pressing. So needs and wants. Mm -hmm. And then you find a piece of maybe segregating to know that some of the things can I get substitutes at a cheaper cost so that you can make more savings. So typically for me, savings are because savings, we don't earn so much on savings, maybe 15% or 10% of your income for uh, savings will be okay. Because okay. you don't earn so much on it. But typically for me, 
for investment, I will do a double of whatever I've done for the savings. This may be my savings, maybe for emergencies, like maybe when my car breaks down or other things that okay. maybe my insurance is not covering. Okay. Yeah, but for investment, I will want to have a double of what I have in my savings in invest because that one comes with higher interest rates. Okay. And every day I'm earning something on it. So, so there are there are, there are people who have okay. So you're saying that for instance, if I'm saving maybe my salary is one thousand and I'm saving yes. uh say hundred cities into my savings yes. accounts, I should be looking at saving two hundred into my investment accounts. Is that yes. what is that the explanation? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what um, the, uh, then my next question I will be my next question will be I know there are people who have savings accounts and so maybe they save for maybe three months. And then they pick that money and buy maybe government T bills. Is that advisable? Okay. Oh yes. Typically, savings is basically setting money aside for maybe purchases, meeting some emergencies like car breakdowns and other. Some people too don't have a health insurance policy, so mm -hmm. when they have a savings and then there's a health emergency, they fall onto their savings account. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so 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 let me ask you uh, this: at, at what point should I start investments, like you know, setting money aside for investments, not savings? At what point? Okay, okay. There's this Kenyan proverb that says that the best time to plant a tree was twenty years ago, and 20 the years ago. best time is now. <laughs> yes, and the second best time is now or today. Okay. So if um, you haven't started investing yet. You should start investing now because there are a lot of things you lose if you don't invest. One, inflation is in your purchasing power. If you have like um, you have like thousand Ghana cities now, I mean, think inflation rate for the month of May is, is I think it's eleven point six if I'm not wrong. Yeah, eleven point six. So inflation yeah. is yeah, eleven point six percent inflation. So if you have your money and you are not investing it in anything that will give you some premium above inflation that means you are losing value every day mm -hmm. if you don't invest so if you haven't started investing one today is the best time to start because one inflation is eating up your money a portion of your money mm -hmm. so so for those in the informal sector those uh who don't have the opportunity to the potential mm -hmm. in time. okay so i'm asking that for those in the informal sector those who don't have the opportunity uh, to work yes. in a formal sector where your employer will deduct what you're supposed to contribute to pensions, what, what, should, what should happen to them? Yes. How much of their income should go into their pensions? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, you see, um, when it comes to investments, everybody has their needs. There's something called investment objective, and all that your investment objective depends on what you want to use the money for and at what time. Mm -hmm. And there's something for investment time horizon. How long do you want to keep the money? Okay. Okay. H how long do you want to keep your money? So, Kafri, okay, okay. Uh, she's back. Okay. We, don't have money. we lost you there, but you can go ahead. Yes. So, um, for those who are doing their own business, they can set up their own investments by working to any licensed investment company, telling them that, okay, you want, maybe they'll be retired, maybe when they are 56, they can't be doing the kind of work they are doing or when they are sick. So, they want to have an investment plan or retirement plan. Okay. Mostly, a retirement plan is appropriate because they'll be able to help you estimate um, how much you will need. Looking at that, they will interview you, understand the specific issues around you, like your dependents mm -hmm. and uh, how your lifestyle is, so that they help you estimate how much you will be needing at retirement. Mm -hmm. And then they will guide you as to how much you can be putting aside every month. Every month, so okay. By this number of years, you'll be able to accumulate this amount of money. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of going to a licensed investment banking firm. And mm -hmm. talking to them about your intention to invest towards your retirement, they have a lot of products. We we'll select one that will meet your we'll suit and you. Your risk okay. Yes. Kaffee, so, so, so someone, build... mm, someone will argue that my company is already paying my pensions. So why do I need to save? 
Why okay. do I need to invest when I know that when I retire, I have some, you know, pensions to rely on? Kafui. Okay. That's a very okay, you got you got the question. Okay. Oh. You see, and your the one goes to sleep, and that one just targets farm managers, and that's what you get. The lump sum you get when you retire for tier three is a savings scheme. It's not it's voluntary, no mandatory like tier one and tier two. So your employer can decide not to do it for you. Mm -hmm. do it for you or you may not also have it and it's not punishable mm -hmm. but the truth of the matter is that you don't have control over those funds for instance if you are not yet 60 years you can't have access to your uh, SNIT pension as well as your t2 unless under strange circumstances where you have a permanent disability and all those things and then they have to process it for you but when you start investing towards your own pension you generate an extra income that will be beneficial to you at retirement. A lot of things happen at retirement. One, at retirement, you are you are 60. So your organs may be weak. You may need to buy more, uh, pay for more medications. Some people too, did not give birth early. So even at retirement, they are still paying for school fees. Some people too may not have built houses and all that. So at retirement, when they take the alarm sum, that is when they decide to build and all that. So you realize that they take the lump sum and they use it for other things. And then you realize that the quality of life dwindles because you and I know that those who depend on tier one, as in pension, their monthly pension from SNIT are always complaining that it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. So if you are able to build your own personal pension by setting aside some small money out of your monthly salary, even if it's even 10 or 15%, you do it for that issue is you do it consistently. So you invest consistently for a period of maybe 15 years, 20 years. Maybe you have 20 years to retirement or mm. 15 or 10. So once you keep putting money aside mm. consistently, by the time you retire, that money would have grown into so much that you can always fall on and have the same quality of life that you were having whilst you were working. Remember, when you are on retirement, you, your employer will not pay your medical bills anymore. Right. The bonus, right. the annual benefits will all cease, and then you are on your own. Yeah, so no. if you don't have those extra income mm -hmm. to cushion you at retirement, mm -hmm. you will not be able to help you because typically right. a lot of people right. use their tier to, to acquire permanent residential assets. Those who don't already have, mm. you, you get it. So it's advisable that you yourself, you have one that you have control. Some pensions, over. personal so pensions plan. Mm. Perfect, so far. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us. This is a very important discussion. I'm sure that we'll extend it some other time when we have a lot more time. So far, Kafite is an investment analyst and advisor. And one thing she said is that, I mean, the best time to invest and to save was 20 years ago. What it means is that if you're not saving, you're doing yourself a lot of harm.